I was at a point in my life where I, I had just about anything a person my age could want. Being 33 at the time, you know, I was married, beautiful house in the suburbs, you know, a, a nice job, graduated college, um, all those material things that, you know, because I had a, a, I had a family, um, I was in a church, um, but I turned my back on those things, you know, and one bad decision led to another bad decision, which led to another bad decision. Last week we talked about circumstances and I made a very big point that we cannot allow our, the circumstances to control our lives. I didn't even really start drinking until I was like 35, but when I started, well, it was like way started and got really going quick. Um, became a, uh, a blackout drunk, um, up to two fifths of vodka a day, sometimes whiskey, didn't matter. You know, um, I lost days, I lost jobs, I would wake up thinking, oh, well, I've only missed a couple of days. No, it ended up being I missed 10 days. So, yeah, not being able to function at all. Before I began to use, I was very, very productive. I began to do what we tend to do, is try to be popular. We try to fit in with the crowd. And at this time, the crowd uh, was kind of into marijuana. And then the drug just, uh, it, it progressed. You know, all of a sudden, uh, I was introduced to different things. Uh, I, alcohol and then, of course, crack cocaine. In over 120 communities across the country, Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Centers are taking in people from all walks of life that have found themselves in the grips of alcoholism and or drug abuse and all other life problems. Regardless from where a man or woman comes, the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Centers offer hope for a better life through a spiritually based rehabilitation program. Each center incorporates four essential components into their rehabilitation program. Shelter, food and clothing, counseling and rehabilitation, work therapy, and spiritual mentoring and fellowship. The Army's high rehabilitation success rate is due to their focus on every aspect of a man or woman's life, body, mind and soul. The ARC is different from other programs because our mission is Christ. We know that that makes all the difference. That being sober is not enough. Um, just, they can be just as that the tools we need to give jobs. people to put their lives back in order, Physical, to give them a way to manage their life on a daily basis, all revolve around um, God and who we are in Him, who He says we are, what He says we're able to do and how we should live. And the success in life goes way beyond sobriety to teaching someone how to be honest, to be confident in themselves, to know they have a destiny, to know they have a purpose in life. And of course you're back on sort tables. We do around here. One of the hardest things that I had to accept about myself was that I wasn't God and I couldn't change myself. Only he could change me. Uh, there was uh, I don't think I could count with my fingers and toes how many re, uh, rehabs I've been to. Um, it was a point there for four years, it was almost every six months. And um, I just didn't have the power. Men and women come to Salvation Army Rehabilitation Centers in a number of ways. Through court referrals, hospitals and detox centers, or through individual initiative. Upon entering the Adult Rehabilitation Center, the first stop is the counselor's office. Based on this and subsequent visits, a rehabilitation program made up of work therapy, spiritual and educational programs, and individual and group counseling is created for each individual's needs. 
I work with uh, the men and women on a one-to-one -one basis, providing counseling, um, spiritual guidance, and I do a lot of case management, teach and provide group counseling for them. Basically teach them a better way of life. Many of them are so filled with pain and um, that's their normal and teaching them that normal isn't living that way, normal isn't just surviving and that there is a life out there and people that, that love them unconditionally, not for what they do or what they can get. My counselor and me, um, we work very hard at um, addressing the issues in my life that will, um, that will keep me stagnant and stop me from growing. Tim's heart is sincere, you can tell, you know? And it wasn't easy for me at first, but then when I really started to sit down and forge a relationship with him, it turned out that he was really sincere about helping people. He really wanted to, you know? And that made it easier for me to, um, to invest some of my life into him. She um, doesn't take any, like I said, any of my stuff. And she lets me know when she thinks I'm trying to uh, avoid <laughs> or a, a subject or whatever. And um, she always just makes me face things for the, re the reality of it. Uh, she, what I loved about her most was she's an excellent spiritual guide, but that was not something that she um, pushed on me. The twists and the turns, but if you trust with your heart that your heart will end up having wings. So it seems like this drawing represents a lot to you. It has taken me a long, hard road to realize that I'm worth something. He's a little impatient. He wants things done now. And we are we're working on that and counseling the uh, being more patient. And also, every week the ARC staff, made up of counselors, work therapy supervisors, and administration staff, meet together to discuss the progress of each beneficiary. Each aspect of the beneficiary's program is reviewed in order to determine weaknesses that need to be worked on and strengths to be praised and built upon. Constant communication between staff members facilitates ongoing rehabilitation program adjustments, keeping beneficiaries challenged and accountable in the rehabilitative process. The thing I enjoy most uh, about my job is working with the men, uh, especially the new men coming in. It makes me see me when I first came in. Um, it's right there in your face. I'm especially gratified when I get to work with the younger guys. They're younger and younger coming in. And they say um, that I'm a little harder on them than I am the older men. Um, I was sitting in AA rooms when I was 17 and 18, and the older men told me to get the message, and I wouldn't be there when I'm 40 or 43, and here I am today. And these younger kids coming in now, they need to finish high school, uh, go to college, and have a better chance. So I guess I am a little tougher on that. Damien and myself, we work in the same office together, and we know each other's moods. And um, when something's bothering us, we just don't. It's kind of it's just an accountability thing. Um, because you're going to have bad days, you're going to have good days, but handling the bad days has to be different or you're going to end up on a bar stool somewhere. I don't think Mark ever goes on a truck, does he? Uh, but a lot of times the guy will come in and they'll say, well, I think I've hit bottom. And I uh, hear people talk about bottoms a lot. And really, how do we know if we've ever hit a bottom? I mean, there's always further that we can go. So you might think that, wow, I've never been this low before, but how do we know it's the bottom? Mm -hmm. uh, so then I come in, I say that, and then I go out and I relapse, and I go, okay, well, my bottom's a little deeper than I thought, and I'm going to have to take a little more time and some more, I put some more effort into it. And then I relapse again, I go, okay, now I, gotta, now I know how much more effort i got to put into it. And that continues until the desire to stop using outweighs the desire to use. Uh, and hopefully that's when a spiritual change can occur. But, and still, know. we 
I notice with myself though, when I hit that point to do anything it takes, go to any lengths. Yeah, that's the wellness. Yeah. When we, they first come in our intake office, sometimes uh, they've been on the streets for a number of days, unshaven, unkept, unclean. And uh, to see them the very next day now uh, showered, shaved, combed with new wardrobe, and they, they just seem to be beaming, the dramatic change that takes place. And then over the course of months, we see uh, change, and they start to uh, communicate that to us to say, you know, I feel better. I, uh, I have a sense now of hope and, uh, and a future for me. So they, they start to verbalize that change in themselves. Okay, so that's Damien and I's office. Security office is right there, you know, the desk office, desk personnel, get your wake-ups and all that. Come down this way. Men's bathroom there if you need it. Every ARC beneficiary receives Our shelter library. in a clean, comfortable, safe environment. Clothing uh, is supplied if needed, and a well-balanced meal served three times a day is also provided. This will be your dorm, Jason. Though these are simple needs, they're important elements in helping the beneficiary focus on his or her rehabilitation program. Providing the basics of food, shelter, and clothing is the first step to building a resident's self-esteem. Hey, Robin. Do you remember Jason Martin? Hi, Jason. The second step is to begin giving them the tools and helping them learn the benefits of an honest day's work. Welcome back, Jason. Thank I'll you. see you in, when I get the schedule worked out with Doug. All right. All right. Good luck. We have a work therapy program. Every beneficiary that's in our program is involved in the work therapy and assignment. People are assigned. They're expected to uh, get up, suit up, show up. A sense of discipline now that they have in their lives. It provides stability. It provides um, accountability. How you doing tonight, man? How you doing? You all right? Many people that come into the Salvation Army programs have never worked a 40-hour work week. And on top of that, address their, their issues that brought them here. This way, they, um, they need to be on time. They need to listen to direction. They need to maybe deal with a supervisor that they don't always agree with. Instead of walking off the job, you need to work through that. Um, because if you walk off a job in the real world, you don't get paid. And when you don't get paid, you don't eat. It's 10-4. Is everything going all right on route today? Yes, sir. So far, good day. 10-4. Drive safely. and want to talk to you later. I look forward to work therapy. I like uh, working in the dispatch office. First of all, it's, it's something new. It's very interesting. I've never had an office type job, even though it can get chaotic at times. Um, but I really look forward to that. One thing great about this program is nowhere, no matter where you are, whether it's work therapy, eating, uh, just meditating in the library, you're gonna hear spiritual words being spoken by spiritual people and that makes me feel right at home to the address next door. i'm going to give her a 60 minute call ahead yes and make sure that the donor will be able to meet us out there thank you so those are some of the situations we have to deal with but it's um it's great it's great i like the fact that uh, i'm somebody you know and for a long time I first did not forgive myself for what I allowed myself to, to the choices I made. And then second of all, I uh, did not feel that I was worthy to even live in this society anymore. But thank God for the Salvation Army. You know, any man, I, I, read the, I read the mission of the Salvation Army and William Booth. He said that while women weep as they do now, I'll fight. He said, while children go hungry, as they do now, I'll fight. While men go into prison, in and out, in and out, I'll fight. While there is yet 
remains a dark soul without the light of God, I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. That is a man with a mission from Christ. And I, that's why I just love the Salvation Army. Donations of usable furniture, clothing, collectibles, and other items are either dropped off at attended donation trailers, family stores, or picked up by Salvation Army trucks. Residents unload the trucks and sort the donations. They are then either sold as is, or after simple repair or refurbishing, are sold in local Salvation Army family stores. This entire process, from donor to family store customer, is at the heart of the Rehabilitation Center's work therapy program. The sales from these stores make the Rehabilitation Center self-supporting. Okay, do I have a $1,200 bid on the Cadillac? It's already been marked down once and this is half the price. Do I have a $1,200 bid? In addition to the family stores, some centers have weekly or monthly car auctions. The sale of these donated vehicles also help in the financial support of the Rehabilitation Center. The ARC offers a wide variety of programs for the people that enter the doors. They come with all kinds of handicaps. They cannot manage life on a daily basis. So we give them the tools they need to put their lives back together. For some people, Maintaining a job is an impossibility for them, so work therapy allows them to be accountable. Every day they go to work therapy. They have to be there on time. They have to learn how to interact as a team. They have to learn to be responsible. Um, it's a critical piece that so many people are missing today. Our counseling sessions, our one-on-one -on -one time, our, um, our time to focus with each other in groups after programs are over and discuss what's going on in our lives and discuss our issues our time in Bible class, our time in the community, in an AA group or an NA group, learning where our supports are in the community, finding our home church, um, getting a sponsor. There are critical pieces that people have to put into their lives here. Bad stuff that I put my family through, um, they would do anything for me. And I can't tell you how many times I've abused or used that in my favor. And I think that's one thing that's um, made me feel so ashamed of myself and so, you know, judgmental towards myself because I know I've done it and it's not that that's the type of person I am, but when I was using, it made me like that. My group sessions are both men and women and um, it's something that is fairly new within the past six months or so, combining groups, men and women in the groups. It's um, provided a whole new dynamic when uh, men and women can sit and share issues with each other. I've noticed that a lot of positive has come out of it, that uh, men are, are more relational and feeling-based. Men are more um, fact-based. So the combination of the two provides a great dynamic. Other alcoholics and other addicts are the only ones you can support because other people don't understand. They can say, oh, I know what you're feeling. I know it. Unless you've been through it, you don't. You can't. You can't know the pain, the, the guilt, the remorse, the, yeah, the regrets. You just can't know. So the support of each other is so important. And that's what we try to do. I love the ladies that come through here. I mean, you couldn't get a more, a larger variety of people, but I have always felt that there isn't anybody you can't learn something from. And I have learned something from each and every person here. I'm looking at it now, you know, and I can see why I went to drugs from age 10 and the things that happened to me between the ages of 10 and 20, you know, parenthood, abortion, <coughs> dope fiend, collected. These are all people that never in a million years would ever have even given each other the time of day, but because we're here, we're meant 
to affect each other's lives. I try to go to a lot of the in-house meetings because it's spiritual. And I didn't realize how spiritual um, NA and AA really can be. I didn't look at it in the spiritual aspect. I had finally got the um, chance to experience that. And I like that experience. That's, that's keeping me interested as well, as well as, you know, helping me to grow. So we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ tonight. We invite you to turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, the chapter verse 79. Salvation Army officers oversee every aspect of the center's operation. The many hats they wear include counselor, pastor, social worker, and administrator. They are committed to making it all work. To be an officer in the Salvation Army, first and foremost, we're ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And from that, we are called to do many, many different things in any given day. We have to be social workers, we have to be teachers, we have to be educators. Uh, sometimes we are called to be disciplinarians in our roles as uh, pastors and as leaders. Lord, we thank you for the people that have come under our roof. We ask, Lord, that you will give us the mindset of Christ as we deal with the people that we have to discuss today and we discuss the affairs as we discuss the affairs of your kingdom. We praise you and we worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So it's not simply preaching the gospel, it's in a larger way how we live our lives and uh, just what we have to do in so many ways on a daily basis. Officership is a very big thing and I submit that it is not for the timid. Uh, people have to know that they're definitely called to do this because it can get difficult because we really do consider ourselves to be in a fight against evil and the evils of this world. I keep that quote in my office from William Booth, while women weep as they do now, I'll fight. And I have a big picture of William Booth over my desk. And I feel he keeps me honest, you know, he keeps me motivated, um, fighting constantly to keep marching um, because we are literally rescuing people who are so bereft of hope and so bereft of a future. And any given day, in our interaction with the people that come under our roof into our program, it could be our last, and we're very mindful of that. We're not a static church. We could have somebody for one day or one week, or they might be with us for six months. So every time we are in the pulpit and every time we have a chance to, to see somebody and interact with them, we have to be very mindful of the fact that that may be the last time we have to impress upon them, not only in the spoken word, but in how we are living our lives and how we treat them uh, the truths of the gospel, the truth that God loves them, the truth that God does have a hope and a plan, the truth that God wants something better than perhaps their life has been. We have to try to convey these things because uh, in many situations we, uh, we are the last rung on the safety ladder and uh, we have to be very mindful of the fact that if people leave us they literally could die. I start my day if I got any sleep at all. I got up the next morning with the desire to obtain more drug. I did not worry about breakfast. I did not worry about uh, my hygiene or my appearance. I only worried about getting enough money to cop me some more drugs. While being in the program, I have began to learn, Salvation Army have taught me that my problem is not so much my addiction, but it's my lifestyle. They taught me that if I do not fix the whole man, if I don't allow Christ to come into my life, if I don't have a spiritual awakening, then recovery is almost impossible. So how's the hot dogs? My day now start with prayer and meditation. No matter what, I, I, I don't care if I get up late. Prayer and meditation comes first. And then breakfast and fellowship and meetings, and work therapy. I think the Salvation Army with its different components, um, you know, not only the spiritual component, but showing 
the beneficiaries and allowing the beneficiaries to structure their lives through the work therapy, um, through getting counseling, through learning to live with each other, um, really offers, you know, a, I, I don't know, a full court press and, you know, allowing men and women to grow. And the spiritual component can go ahead and really kickstart that for them. A very important element of the rehabilitation process is learning how to have healthy social interaction. Many of these men and women have never had the experience of a positive, nurturing relationship. The Salvation Army provides numerous opportunities to teach the residents how to have good, clean fun. With each new milestone, whether it's one week or many days of drug-free living, completing the Bible courses, or advancing to another phase in the rehabilitation process, individual recognition, congratulations, and encouragement is received at periodic award ceremonies. This community of support empowers these men and women to continue to strive toward their goal of a new life. I think this program really offers the foundation of hope. I think that um, for me, I've grown as a counselor because I've been able to go ahead and share my faith with both the men and the women. When people reach their rock bottom, they need to know that there is something else that they can go ahead and grab onto. And the Salvation Army, for me, represents a way to go ahead and recapture hope. You have to know in your heart that change has to take place because if it doesn't, death will. Some people say, well, you do drugs, you're just hurting yourself. That is the biggest understatement in the world. You hurt everybody that loves you. Your children deserve a father, not a drug addict. Your parents deserve a son, not a drug addict. So we're, we're responsible to our people, our families and our friends. We're responsible. We, we should be dedicated to being who, we, who God put us on this earth to be. And it's okay to stumble. It's, it's, it's okay to have a past. For everyone to have one, whether it's drugs and alcohol or what, everyone has a past. And that's what I want every person that steps into this program to know regardless to what you've done, regardless to where you come from, change is possible. All we have to do is be willing to change. And that, that's my whole message, man. So I want to thank the Salvation Army, you know, for being here for me. You know, I want to thank God for placing people in the Salvation Army to help me. So I want to thank all of them, whoever they may be. And I also want to say to anyone who may come into a Salvation Army ARC, just don't give up. Whatever happens, don't give up. Just continue to fight because we can have victory. We can. <laughs>